Welcome back, and hopefully you were able to complete the challenge and auto-match all of the concrete elements in the superstructure. If not, this was a tricky challenge, so it's okay. Just look at the solution and make sure to try giving it a shot afterwards. So I'm going to start by auto-matching the slabs. So for that, I want to create an appearance profile. You don't have to do that, but it'll look better. So I'm going to go to Navigator, Appearance Profiles, and just create one called Slabs. And for this appearance profile, the active appearance is going to be blue. And we are going to be using a growth simulation left to right. Then I need to figure out how am I going to be able to actually auto match. So let's select one slab and look at the user fields. So that's resource properties and then user fields. So we'll look at these user fields and figure out that there's the level parameter that automatically comes in from Revit that has the level at the end. And in the activities, and to find the activity, I'm just going to right click, collapse all, so collapse all, gradually expand. We have core concrete and concrete, it's probably under concrete, and then concrete on deck. And we have the level at the end of the activity. However, we have a lot of stuff here and a lot of stuff here. So if you use a substring, it may not be very reliable. In this case, I'm going to use instead the level parameter from the ID that's separated by two dash characters. So I'm going to select level four through the end and then use the 3D view to box select all of these slabs. So just like this and then like this. And then you may notice that some of them did not get selected. That's okay. You can run the auto matching rule a second time. No problem. So we're going to go to assign resources and then auto matching. And then we're going to make sure slabs is used and we're going to create a new rule. If you've created rules before, you can select your own rule. I'm going to create a new one and call this level to ID. And then use only selected, use only selected, many to many, add an expression. We're going to auto match the user feed level. So just type in level and select it from the drop down to the ID. And we're not going to be using an exact match. We're going to be using an exact match plus a separator, which are the dash sign and the space sign, the space key. So hit save and hit OK, and then hit search. We can investigate those, or we can click on assign all, and then drag the focus time to see what has been actually assigned. And this looks like it makes sense. However, there are a lot of uh, parts of the slabs that weren't assigned, so I'm just going to select those and rerun the auto matching rules. So we can go like this. You can use, by the way, the isometric view to have a true isometric view of the model. An isometric view means that the distance from the object to the camera will not affect its uh, size, rather than in perspective mode where it does. Okay, so that's good for now. I'm going to take it out of isometric and then run the auto matching rule again. So just search and assign all. And now we might have missed a few, so I'll just do those as well. Over here. And then run it one final time and the sign all. Okay, so we can do the core now. That would be a good idea. So I can go to 3D objects tree and just hide floors or unload floors from my model. And then all I'm left with is the core. So I can select all of that. We're only doing the superstructure, so it's okay if you miss anything. We're gonna create a new appearance profile for the core. So just use a new appearance profile. I'm going to call it core. And then it's based on install. We're going to pick a brown color and we're going to use a growth simulation from bottom to top. 
and then we're going to find the core activities. So we go to the schedule, we can collapse this, concrete core, core shear walls, that looks like it's it. From third floor all the way to the end. Now we missed something, is that before selecting the core, we didn't actually check if it's the level parameter we're going to be using or the base level. So sometimes it's base level, sometimes it's bottom constraint, depending on how it was imported and from which software. Uh, Revit will uh, use the level parameter for slabs and then base level for vertical elements or bottom constraint. So let's select those again while remembering to change the level from our previous rule to base level. So auto matching, I'm going to edit this existing rule and click here and change that from level to base level. Hit save, hit OK. Change from slabs to core, it did that for me. And hit search and assign all. Now I'm going to drag my focus time to see what happened. It looks like everything is good except this one piece of core wall over here. So let's see what's wrong here. So this one uses base constraint, probably due to how it was modeled. So I'm going to use the auto matching rule again, edit it and change base level to base constraint. So just type in base and pick base constraint. Hit save, OK, search and assign. And what are we missing? We're still missing the floors, the slabs for the core wall. So I can do this and then select all of these. This probably belongs to the regular slab. However, we'll just do it here and fix it later. And find the core slab activities, select those, and does this use base constraint? We forgot to check again, so let's check that really quick. So this uses level, so like we said, slabs use the level parameter. You always have to interrogate your resources to figure out how to auto-match. So we're going to edit this rule again and change that back to level. So use the drop down, hit save, and we're going to use install for this. Hit search and assign all. And let's see how this looks like now. So if we manually scrub the focus time, we see the core wall and then the slabs coming in and we check this one over here, the slab that we did earlier. So we can unassign that in a second and then reassign it. So actually we can come here, we can click on this, select assign two tasks, then we can select this one, unassign it from whatever it's assigned to, and then reassign it to this activity. However, we're using here the slabs profile. Okay, so this was fixed. And so on. Now in, we still have some walls and a slab here, so we can do the same thing as we did earlier. We can select this one over here, right click, select assign two tasks, and then reassign this to it. And then also select these walls, select assign two tasks, choose the one right above over here, and then assign these walls to it using the core appearance profile. Now, at the end of the first challenge video, I showed everything. I showed the results in the form of an animation. We haven't learned how to do that yet, but as a bonus, I'll show you really quick. However, we'll go still go over it more in depth later. So I'm going to go to 4D review, go to the animation editor and pick my initial point. So let's say this one over here and capture a focus time for the cam capture a keyframe for the camera and the focus time then pick my final point let's say over here and then capture a keyframe for the camera and the focus time let's say 10 seconds later and then you can play the animation to make sure it's what you want
this looks good. I can escape from this or exit out of it and then play this and speed it up or slow it down depending on what I want to do. So hopefully this was helpful. I'll see you in the next video for the next section. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.